Okay, it's about the time. Let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, and then uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, record this one in that nobody gonna miss anything, and then uh, I will load this one once it's been processed. Okay, even though no one has shown uh, up. Okay, so. I think that in today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one in a certain plan that uh, within first hour that I plan to go through the, the quiz, quiz number two, and then we, I'm going to, the second hour, I'm planning to cover the uh, assignment, so the third assignment, okay? So this is our that, uh, let's go ahead and get this done, okay? So this is our uh, quiz two, which is based on chapter 10. Look at this one. A study, De Lucas, De, De, sorry, a study, D. Lucas, uh, Balladon, Neve, and then uh, De Nadai, 2019. These are the authors of that uh, this particular uh, article. They published this article in 2000. 2000 tested whether wearing wetsuits influences swimming velocity. 12 competitive swimmers and triathletes. Swam 1500 meters at maximum speed twice each. Once wearing a wetsuit and once wearing a regular bathing suit. The order of the transfer randomized each time the maximum velocity in meters per second of the swimmers were recorded. Okay. The wetsuit data, wetsuits data frame has 12 observations on the following four variables. 12 observations means 12. Uh, uh, swimmers or triathletes. Okay, so wet suit and this is wet suits. See, s okay and x right maximum swim velocity when we are in a wet suit. No wet suit maximum swim velocity when we are in a regular bathing suit. Gender, okay, gender of the swimmer, female or male. Type, type of athlete, swimmer, or triathlete. So this is the data set they have given that. Uh, the first uh, entries, the uh, information of the first six uh, uh, swimmers or triathletes. Be aware that the data frame wetsuits and the variable name wetsuit differ only in the inclusion of an S and S. Okay. If the researchers are interested in whether we are in a wetsuit affects swimming velocity, what is the outcome variable of interest? Outcome variable. We, we haven't decided outcome variable yet. So they were looking for something. We are in wetsuit one or no wetsuit or the difference in velocity between swimming in no wetsuit compared to the wetsuit. I think this one, no? you had to just to, in order to get the, like a rough idea how to how that uh, wetsuit can affect to the, that uh, swimming velocity. You have to compare and contrast with the with, with wetsuit and no wetsuit without. Okay, So that should be then, then take the difference. That should be then the difference between. That's the response variable. Okay, we are looking for the response. Variable. The difference in velocity between swimming in now wetsuit compared to the wetsuit. Okay, see. Which of the following R code would create a new variable called speed up? That contains the difference between swimming with wetsuit versus no wetsuit. The same thing that we talked about earlier. So speed up, and then you're gonna put it back into that your that data frame. Data data frame is wetsuits and new variable is speed up. Speed up is nothing but wetsuit minus no wetsuit within this same way, uh, same data frame. So it should be B. Let's go to three. Speed up contains the swimming velocity with the wetsuit minus no wetsuit. That's right. Speed up means like a wetsuit minus no wetsuit. We saw that one. The histogram above was created with this code. How would you modify this code to look at the distribution of swimmers that are faster with the wetsuit and those that were faster with no wetsuit? Okay. What are you going to do? How would you modify that uh, this code to look at the distribution of? I'm looking for another distribution of that were faster with the wetsuit and those that were faster. Uh, those are that faster with. No wetsuit, with the, with wetsuit and without wetsuit. So, but they were already included over here. With and without wetsuit has been taken into account. 
by that uh, taking the difference between those two velocities. Velocity with the wetsuit minus the velocity ma uh, without wetsuit is called the speed up. See? The regular bathing suit will be called the no wetsuit. So that will be that see? speed up. So speed up is showing that everything on the positive side. See? So everything on the positive side, that means that the y-axis is positive in that it's already included. So this histogram shows that also you must go faster with the wetsuit. See? Faster, because all you subtracted how? With wetsuit minus no wetsuit. See? So, see? Like this. See? Wetsuit minus no wetsuit. Wetsuit minus no wetsuit. So that difference is positive means like a pretty much the, all shows that all the swimmers are faster with the wetsuit. Okay. Speed up <clears throat> contains a swimming velocity with wetsuit minus no wetsuit. Could these differences in swimming velocity be normally distributed in the population? In the population, when you're going to lift it up and keep going, can this be like a normally distributed in population? If you increase so that uh, all the number of that uh, the triathletes or the swimmers, like rather than having 12 people keep going and 100, 200, 300, 400, 1,000, million, trillion like that, pretty much taking into account all the everybody in that particular population. So will that will, will this be converted into a normal distribution? Yes, that can happen. No? That's a possibility. Yeah, it is possible. It is possible. Look at this. one researcher wondered if some of the variation in the difference in velocity came from the type of swimmer they were. Triathletes swim in wetsuit more often than competitive swimmers do. And uh, triathletes swim in wetsuits more often than competitive swimmers do. And so, and she worried that their experience would influence the results of the study. Above is a faceted histogram of difference in velocity by the type of athlete. The two vertical lines depict the mean of the swimming group and the mean of the triathlete group. See? Now the speed up has been come, taken into account with respect to the, that, the type of the, the swimmer. See? Swimmer or triathlete. See? Swimmer or triathlete. So they were thinking that the triathletes swim in very often they wear the wetsuit. So that will affect that study that the, the researcher is very concerned about that. What would be the pre of this uh, model? Pre. Pre. Proportional of reduction in error. Excuse me. Close to zero, close to one, around point one. You know prove that uh, pre means that uh, sum of squared, sum of squared regression, sum of squared in the empty model, speed up, speed up, without this one. See, look at this one. They are speed up. See, if you compare this one, what would be the pre of this model? This model is by the type. If you go ahead and look at the, their pre, the, this one, so all the time that uh, people, see, look at here, they were equally see, balances over here. They are pretty much the same way, whatever they added here, see. So that part would be the, that uh, pre proportional of reduction in error should be close to zero, close to one, around 0.5. I would need to run the supernova function to be able to see. Okay. Do you really need that, that uh, supernova function for you to that run in order to get that uh, R without that one? Can you tell for this particular one? It's getting close to zero because it's being balanced, no? For the faceted histogram, see? It's close to zero. The averages, the averages that they 
and the velocity and the two vertical and depict the mean of the Srima group and the mean of the triathlete group. Hmm. 0 0.08, 0 0.08. Almost see, close to zero. See, so the error will be measured. Error with respect to this one. This is the average. You know this average. Okay, how could you gonna measure the average? Look at this average. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. Okay, what I'm gonna do. Okay, okay. this is the center. Okay, from the center, decide how many people you have. One. See, one. Speed up is how much? From there here. One person. This one? Zero person. So there's another person. Okay. So if you get that, that uh, uh, sum of scale, the, this reading, the reading should be how much? See? Reading is the middle of this one. Okay. Let's say middle of this. One. This is something, same thing that. With the same way that see equally distributed, see? equally distributed, same number of people. See here you have one, two, three, four. So if you get with respect to that uh, your error, the regression, regression is nothing but everybody's measurement gonna go to this one. Can you remember predicted value? That's the sum of squared regression, sum of squared regression divided by sum of squared total. Let's get the sum of squared total. Sum of squared total, we can get, see? Sum of squared total, we're gonna get that one by square in that one, see? So because of this, see? balance the same number of people, the frequency, this side frequency, how many? To this side, one, this side, one, one. This side, how many? One, two, three, four, three, five. Here, one and two, three. But they, they are all, or even though that you have three people, they are that, uh, if you look at the values are almost close to zero. Because of that, we can simply say that they are that uh, sum of squared regression. You know how to get the sum of squared regression. Sum of squared regression, you can get by that, uh, get the reading, the reading minus, the y minus, uh, uh, this value minus uh, empty model, what is that one? Can I remember? We can have a look at it, this one, see. Okay, now about this one, see. Uh, see. Uh, okay. Okay, twenty two. So you can remember I'm talking about this one, see. I'm talking about this why why speed up. Okay. My speed up x is type. Type is categorical. One is swim, the other one is triathlete. See. So how many people we have in that uh, swimmers? See. Okay, they both will have the same average. See? Same average. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why they are there. Three will be zero for that reason. Okay. So they both will carry the same average. See? They don't differ. They will carry the same average. See? They are in the same line. Let's say that we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. I'm going to do this one. One, two. So we four. So here is the my average, okay? I'm gonna call this one Y bar for the swimmers, okay? 
by both windows. By both windows, by both windows. Two above, two below. Here how many? One, three. Three below, five above. Okay. Look at okay. Three. One, two, three, two, three, five. But see, look at the viper. Viper for triathletes. The same, see, same line. Same line. See. See. In addition to that one, we have a grand mean too. They average us in the same line. See, triathlete and this one. Both of them. See, same line. See. Let's say that value is like almost like a 0.067.79, No, not 75, it should be 75, 78, 78, 0.78. 0 0.078 okay. 0 0.078 0 0.078 okay 0 0.078 they both got that so you know free nothing but sum of squared regression over sum of squared total how do you find the sum of square regression? Can you remember? That's the summation of what? You know how to find the sum of square total. Sum of square total is nothing but y minus y bar, bar grand mean. Okay, grand mean somewhere here. Let's say grand mean is somewhere here. That's y bar. The grand. Okay. My bar squared. Okay, see, the band. Then if you go ahead and then pick a like a something from here, see, you're gonna measure from the y to y to y bar, that's the error, y bar to here, see, here to here. Y bar s minus y bar, see. Y bar. Plus y bar, try at least to y bar, <laughs> would give me the regression. <laughs> some people above, some people below, see? So they both have the same mean. You go to their own, see? Y bar, S, Y bar, see? So that's a model, that's the regression, see? Sum of squared, see? You go to, see? You go to the Y bar minus this one, see? Look at the gap. Look at the gap. Look at the gap. Gap the same. Gap the same. They get the same, see? Y bar, see? Y bar to this one. Y bar, this one for everybody. Everybody, instead of talk, thinking about that, everybody here, you're going to think everybody gonna, everybody's predicted value is this one. It's a projection. Projection, see? It's a projection. So this gap, Y bar, see? Y bar T minus Y bar. And the error would be what? Y minus Y bar. And then you can do that one for all. That's the error. Error would be what? <laughs> error would be this one squared. Okay. Error would be SSE would be sum Y, Y of uh, Y, S minus Y bar is squared. 
plus c y is square like that so the total would be y to y bar y to y bar y to y bar see y to y bar y minus y bar y minus y bar y minus y bar and the sum them up that's the total here would be y minus their own mean regression mean sum of squared sorry uh, that they are mean to mean to y bar see predicted values Predicted values. Predicted values. Same mean. 0.078 minus see, this y bar. See. So then that should be what? They think they cancel out see, for everybody. See. And then it's close to 0. to see or oh, you really need what on the other hand you're going to say that okay i would need to run the supernova function to be able to say yes if you say that you need the supernova function that will give you this one too see another, another way to that to have an answer too so you can pick either that a o or a o c How many people? Two and then three people. Six. Five people. Six. See this one. So, okay. So, in a group of the way, see. Three of this. See, either this one or this one. Doesn't matter. A O D. Okay. A O D. Okay. A O D. So take a look at the model that we fit in the output. How would we represent this number with general linear model notation? See this number, see? 0 0.0775, 0 0.0775 actually, 0 0.0775, this one. I will, they say this, this value is 0 0.0775, see? This I have put this one point oh seven eighty. See, that's the mean mean of that each group mean point oh seven eighty. The other one mean see y by so y by t point oh seven eighty. Other one is y bar would be point oh seven seven five. It's nothing but what? This is nothing but b naught. Nothing but beta naught hat. Beta naught hat. Same thing. Okay. So in the general linear model, it's nothing but D node. Okay. D node. You are interested in computing the confidence interval around the estimated mean of speed of how much of swimming velocity increased by having a wetsuit. What should you add to the following code in order to? In order to do so, you are interested in computing the confidence interval, see? Around the estimated mean of, see, estimated mean, you know, around the estimated mean of speed up. See, speed up now has been, see, fitting into the null model. See, fitting into the null model. See, see? that fitting into the null model. When fitting into the null model, they don't take into account anything, okay? See? Look at it. See? Speed up earlier with respect to the type, now with respect to nothing, okay? So here, see? Uh, X variables, no X was. Here Y would be what? Speed up. Speed up. It's quantitative. So this is y bar. Y bar is nothing but b naught, b naught hat is 0 0.0775. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
On P naught is data, data naught hat, which is point oh seven seven five. Okay, point B node, B node, beta node hat equals point O seven seven five. That model has B node. For that one, if they want to build up the confidence interval, that means this is the point estimate. Is the point estimate y bar? This is y bar. See? I need the confidence interval. See, I need this upper bound and the lower bound. See, I need the upper bound and the lower bound. This the upper bound is the lower bound. See, see, I need the confidence interval for mu population mu, nothing but lower bound and upper bound. That interval. So I can consider any of these values in this read range that interval are uh, kind of like estimates, better estimates for the unknown parameter mean. See, that's what we are trying to do. In order to do that one, what would be the R code that you have to add into this one? You have to add that's question number seven. Mm -hmm. Yes, one question number six. Mm -hmm. So you're going to add what? You get the empty model and then you put the confident. See, confident will give that one. See, you get the empty model and resample that one. Empty model cannot be resampled. There's no such thing. Okay. Confident. Confident. And remember that's. That's like a, one of the methods that we described for y bar yesterday. See, over here, y bar and b, see, and b, sorry, y bar, see, here, confident empty model, see, confident default, the other one, confident, see. If you're using the T distribution, if you're using the T distribution, see, it's very similar to this one, same as so method four. Method four is nothing but you are using T distribution, okay? It's upper bound and lower bound rather than calculating like this. You can easily get this done using confident, okay? Since that's the only one is available, you go to B. So if you are Identify your confidence interval for speed up. What exactly are you confident about? Confidence interval is nothing but you are confident that the true effect of wear in a wetsuit on swimming velocity lies within it. Okay, true velocity. See, you are confident that the true effect of wear in a wetsuit, see, that's the true effect. See, true effect or true, true average. True speed up, see? true speed up, see? true speed up. <clears throat> that means the difference between the velocities with and without that uh, swimsuit, wet suit, wet uh, wet suit will be taken into account. See, this the see population. Oh, true mean for. Up. See, true mean. How this gonna affect whether this gonna be within this one or not? How many times it's gonna be within this one? See, when you make this one, see confidence interval. How many confidence interval will be within this one? See, see? you can say that we are in a, that a certain percentage. See? 
certain percentage, percentage has been given, that's called the confidence uh, coefficient. Then uh, you have to make sure that within your confidence interval, certain number of confidence interval based on the confidence coefficient, your true mean will locate inside, see, like that. Not disconnect this one first. Disconnect and connect. Should work. Yeah, should work. Yeah. So, see, the mu will be within confidence interval. See, that's the idea. See? Confidence interval is see? confidence interval. So, mu is this one. All the confidence in based on that, how many confidence intervals are you going to create based on the, that given confidence coefficient? You know, that we have that what we are trying to say that your true mean or the true effect okay, of wearing wetsuit on swimming velocity lies within true means like a the population mean. What's the purpose of generating sampling distribution of means of speed up? By resampling, also called bootstrapping. See, resampling called bootstrapping. What's the purpose of generating sampling distribution of means? You're going to go to the means and you generate the sampling, you know, speed up by resampling. Because what? <clears throat> this distribution can help you quantify how much your best estimate of the population need could vary. Estimate of the population mean, which is mu, which is as best estimate as is y bar, how much that vary can be quantified by making the, the building up the sampling distribution. If you're going to build up the sampling distribution, see, by bootstrapping, sampling distribution, see, sampling distribution. And when distribution, okay. you go here, you see, you build up. Okay. It is the population. In the population, you have a see, you, you don't know population means, see, that's a speed up. See, your variable is speed up. Why? Okay. The population means. So you go ahead and then calculate what? Y bar, see? Y bar 1, Y bar 2, see? And Y bar 1000, like that, see? Can remember, see? Sample 1, see? Sample 1, sample 2, see? And sample, see? Sample 1000, see? We had a that discussion. And then you're going to resample, see? Mm -hmm. Sample thousand. This one sample two. Like that. This is y bar two, see? Y bar two. So how could you gonna generate them? By bootstrapping. See, you know how to get the bootstrap. Bootstrap method we there we did large scale. Okay. And then we're gonna make the sampling distribution of means by boot resampling. If you do that on that one. You can definitely can quantify how much your best estimate of the population mean could vary from the 
population, the estimate of the population mean vary from what? Vary from population mean. This estimate of the population mean gonna vary from the population mean. See? So we are in order to quantify this error, see? This error is what? Y bar minus mean. More specifically, you can say how much y bar ups see, from your true value. See? see, y bar ups minus this one to quantify that. Term. Quantify, we make the sampling distribution y bar histogram. See, see. Sampling distribution of y bar means ample means. So the answer should be we can be helped to quantify how much your best estimate varies of the population mean could vary. Distribution of y bar, which is sample means sample means okay. Number 10, let's see the number 10. What do you think? See, if you create a bootstrap sample in distribution of 10,000 mean from your sample of speed up, what qualities would you expect it to have? Roughly, normal shape and a standard deviation smaller than the standard deviation of the sample. See? Can you remember? See? Same thing that we had. See? We had down this side. See? Okay. And also that. See? See? You get see, see. normal. See, shape would be normal. The spread, the spread is what? Spread is standard deviation of y bar, which is sigma y bar, which is absorbs. See, divided by square root 10. S subs divided by square root 10. We spread we spread as the same as the spread so the standard deviation of y bar sigma y bar which is S ops over square root 10. S ops over square root 10. Over square root 10. It's always less than what? S subs. 
So the number 10 should be what? Roughly normal. And then roughly normal shape and standard deviation in shape, but in the standard deviation, smaller than the standard deviation of the sample. Assuming a person swimming velocity wearing just their swimsuit, no wetsuit, just swimsuit, will predict their maximum velocity while wearing a wetsuit. In wetsuit. How would we depict the model, null model of maximum velocity in a wetsuit of this plot? See, wetsuit versus no wetsuit. So now we are trying to find out that, that relationship between that uh, the speed up, are they co correlated? See? With the wetsuit, see, their swimsuit, no wetsuit will predict, no wetsuit will predict their maximum velocity while we are in a wetsuit. No wetsuit will predict this one. How would we depict the, depict the null model, null model of maximum velocity in a wetsuit on this plot? Maximum velocity of this one, in this one, it is a line using the best fitting estimate, it's a horizontal line. For sure, it's a horizontal line. You know that when you have a vibration, see, it's a horizontal line. See, on the level, look at. See? This one, wet suit. This one, no wet suit. This is X. This is Y. See? This one. Then this on the null model, see? Y bar. Y bar of red suit. See? This is for the, see? This is for the null model this is for the regression model so the null model one is always horizontal line at the mean of wet suit mean of wet suit so why <laughs> horizontal line B, okay. So the best fitting model for using no wetsuit velocity to predict wetsuit is that one, this one is like that. How would we interpret the point 0.0947? See how much the increment to add to the prediction of the wetsuit for every one. See, it's an increment to add on to the prediction of wetsuit for every one. See. It's an increment. Increment in what? Increment, how much increment to add on to the prediction of weight suit for? See, how much increment to add on to the prediction of the weight suit? That's in the y, okay? It's an increment to add on to the prediction of y variable weight suit for every one meters per second of the no weight suit. For every one meters per second, how much to be added on to the prediction of that one is called the regression. That uh, the slope is the slope. See, it's a slope. See, like this. See? This is a slope. See. see, that's the slope. This is see? see. This is the increment. Increment to increment add to see, increment to add onto the prediction. See, add onto the prediction. See, The prediction line. This is the prediction. See, that's the prediction line. That's the regression line. See, see, 
That's the prediction line. Prediction. <clears throat> So let's see, prediction, see, prediction for this one is what? See, just think, that's the, every one unit increment, see, every one unit, see, one unit means meters per second increment, see. Next. Prediction means y hat, see? y hat. So this is nothing but the run. This is nothing but rise, see? rise over run. So that's the slope. How much we increment to add down to the prediction? So much we add down to the prediction for every increment, unit to increment in X. Okay. What kind of a distribution would this code create? What kind of a distribution? See? Look at. We're gonna go ahead and then fix this one. See, fit in this one. Wetsuit versus no wetsuit. Data, data being resampling. See, you resample and you're gonna get what? B1. B1. Now we are built in a what? Sampling distribution for what? Slopes. See? Slopes. Sampling distribution for slope. That's how we're going to build up the slopes. See? So everywhere they see, then from this one you have a population. This time, instead of this uh, uh, population beta 1, I'm interested in beta 1, not mu this time, but I need to create the see, sample. Second sample, dot dot dot. I say they say that this is a thousand sample. So you're gonna have a B, you calculate B1 first one, B2, sorry, B1, the second entry. And this one is B1, thousand one, see? thousand one. We do not like that as a like a superscript, see. How do you calculate this one? You go ahead and fit in your what? See, no, see, wetsuit, two, no wetsuit, see, every time. But instead of data, you resample data, resample data, see, resample data based on how many data points you have. See, 12. You go to the, wet, the your data, data set, see, Resample data. You go to the data set with suit, suits, and 12. From that time, you're going to resample. Data equals resample. Data equals resampling. You're going to resample that one. From that one, after you that one, using that you have b1 you can extract b1 see and you do this one how many times thousand times see so that will create what b11 b12 b13 dot 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 b1 b1 998, B1999, B1000, see, some B1. See. Can you rearrange them? Yes, you can rearrange them too. If you want, you can rearrange. See, you can rearrange. Okay. 
but uh, you can do histogram for this one. Yes, see. That's my B1. This is my frequency. So I draw a histogram. And meaning the smooth flow over here. And the center. Center would be what? Mean not B1, see? Center would be mean of B1. How do you write it? Mean of B1. You write like that. Mean of B1 is same as what? Data 1. Population. Population slope. Population slope is unavailable. You can use one of the B1. What's the best B1 you can use? Observe B1. And observe B1 based on your sample. Yes. Yes. How about the spread? Do you have any idea about the spread? Spread. This sampling. This is sampling. Distribution of B1. Sampling distribution of B1. Sampling distribution of B1. And we looking for the sampling distribution of B1. So what's the formula for the standard data for that one? Do we know the standard data formula? Yes, you can. It's sent over there. Sampling, no, this is not right. This thing has some issues. Distribution of B1. B1. So the spread V1, okay? So the spread, how do you write the spread? Sigma of sigma of V1. Can you use the same way that we used to use that uh, B1 ops divided by? No, no, no. That's different. That's different. So that's one difference. So this one is nothing but, see, I'm going to write here. Okay, you don't need that one, but I'm going to write it. That one is square root. Mean squared error when you run the regression. Okay, divided by 1 minus n minus 1 times the standard deviation of x variable squared. See, that's the formula. See, that's the formula. Mean squared error. Mean squared error. You can get it from where? Where? From the, the uh, that uh, once you run the, that ANOVA table, ANOVA table will be the mean squared data. But when you run the confidence interval, confint, uh, okay, that one. But when in this case, if you need the confidence interval, see, confidence interval in this bootstrapping, see, look at, see, like that, see, see, anything in between this one, see, you have a lower bound, go, see, Lower bound for beta 1, upper bound for beta 1. Okay. Beta 1. Okay. So the confidence interval for beta 1, see, nothing but lower bound of beta 1, comma, upper bound of beta 1. Once you have a bootstrapping, can you get those? 
Yes, because I cannot remember our trick. We're going to rearrange them and later on get the 25th based on that 95 or whatever that uh, the value that you really need. We're going to talk about it. So you go to that one and then standard deviation. I'm going to call that one six. I'm going to call this one. They, they say that uh, they give a name for this one, but I'm going to give it like a different name for this one. I'm going to I say since it's boot, I would say boot. See? Boot sampling distribution simple name of B1. See? You can save to that one. Of B1. See? See? Boot. Because it's based on the boot. See, you generate them. See, this is nothing but this one. See, this is boot sampling distribution of B1. See, those are those values. See, see? then you're going to put it back into this one by rearranging boot sampling distribution of B1. See, you're going to arrange. Can you remember? We arrange. See, this data. You can see, we have done that one several times. Oh, I'm sorry. So if I go ahead and show you, see, arrange in, uh, uh, in the mean one. Okay. See, after doing this one, see, see. this one. Uh, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not that one. I'm going to go further. Now, here, 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 sampling distribution. Not there. This is not one. Okay. Let me let me just check. Okay. Something is missing. Oh no! Yeah, it's here. Yeah. Okay. Here sample for the mean. Again, from here, here, here. See. Here, later, see, arrange. See. See. You go to the data set and you arrange whatever you want to arrange. See. So here, you can vote. See, vote. You can arrange, arrange, you're going to go to the data set, root sampling distribution of B1, and you're going to arrange B1s. Okay. Okay. Okay, then here you go to see boot and in distribution of C. And in distribution of C. Boot sample in distribution of B1 and then go to B1 C. If you go to B1 and B1, see, you go to B1 and say, I need the 25th one, see, somehow, good sampling distribution of B1, then go to B1. And 975th one, if you are interested in 0.95 confidence interval, see, this one bracket. 
Perfect. 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 Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I can remember that we did this one in two ways. If you just simply go to the data frame, you have to put the comma. If you go to that particular variable here, variable B1, okay. like that, okay. So B1, you can do that one. Anything, we can do that one. Everything is a, everything is an estimate, okay. So, so this one distribution would be great. A sampling distribution of bootstrap of slopes. Part three, what would this code show us, see? This is mean descending node. I, I'm not doing the descending node, ascending node. Okay. So, see. So, if it is descending node, see. If it is descending node, see, out of 10, 100,000, 100,000. I, I, I did this one in ascending node. That's why they put the descending node. Descending node that uh, they're going to read from this side. 2,500th one out of 100,000, 250th one would be what? That's the highest population increment that could have produced our sample, our sample and it would still be considered likely. Okay. What would this code show us? See? The highest population increment. That's the upper bound. In another way, that's say this is the upper bound. Not the lowest upper bound of the confidence interval that produced our sample and it could still be considered likely. It's still, still likely. At the, this is the cutoff threshold. What happened over here? I arranged in a descending node. See? When you arrange in ascending node, Look at that B ones. Okay, I'm gonna go to over here again. See B one, B one, B two. Okay, B one, B two. See like that. See B. Uh, let's say thousand. No, sorry, B one thousand. B one thousand. Okay, then if we arrange, send in order. Yeah, I think the Sunday node, the minimum would come here. See? The minimum, B1. I would say this is B11. See? Mean. Minimum level. Second value, I can, I can say this is a second value. See, B1 is the second one. See? Rather than writing this way, I can, I don't need this one. I'm sorry. I don't need this one. I will write like that way. B1 is second one. So they were ordered now. It's the B1 thousandth one. Thousandth order. Let's say in this case, thousand. That case, that. 100,000, 100,000, okay. Uh -huh. Here, just a thousand. So then we're going to go to see the lower bound from this side. See, lower bound. I'm going to get it from this side. See, see, that's lower bound. Lower bound, how do you get? You go to B1, this one. This is P1. Let's say you are interested in 0 0.95. See? And this one is 0 0.025. This one 0 0.025. 0 0.025 should be multiplied by 1000, which is 25th one. See? That would give you B1 25th entry. Mm -hmm. 
D one twenty fifth entry equals D one twenty fifth entry. In a similar fashion, you have over here somewhere here. Upper bound. That's the lower bound. So B1.975 times 1000, which is 975, which is B1975 entry. This is ascending order, okay? And in order, you have a minimum here. You have a max here. Okay. You have a max here. Okay. B1, 975. Okay, let's say that this the descending order. If you have in them in descending order, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have a max here. See? Max would be see, descending order. See? Max starting from the max. See? So this one, I would say, I'm sorry, B1, 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 1, B2, I'm sorry, B1, 2, comma, dot, 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 B1, 999 V1000. Okay. V1000. See? That's the minimum. That's mean. Now you're going to check from this side. If you go over here, with respect to that one, B1.025, because to the left of that 1,000, 25, V1, see? This is nothing but the upper bound this time, see? You switch. Upper bound, okay? You need the lower bound. See? Lower bound is nothing but see? that's the lower side. Lower bound is you go to the B1.975 times 1000. 973. Which is B one nine seventy fifth one. Okay, the similar way you can apply that one to our example. In that one, we have a hundred thousand. See, hundred thousand. If hundred thousand, it is a descending order. Nine seventy five. Nine seventy five. Getting our question that we have that uh, number four to see, we have see, zero see, now we have B1 see, 
v1 1 which is max the ascending descending node v1 sorry v1 the 2 v1 2 v1 3 comma dot 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 the last one b1 100,000 see 100,000 so there should be somewhere here your upper bound upper bound is nothing but b1 0.025 times 100,000 100,000 which is 2,500 So you're looking for the B1, 2,500. 0.25 times 100,000. One, two, two, five times hundred thousand. Which is we want two thousand five hundred. See. That's the problem. See. For this one, if you want lower bound in a similar fashion, you can get the lower bound, but they were not interested in lower bound. So that should be seen. How do you get that one? You How do you get this one? Simply, the way that we have them, see? You go to sampling distribution, that they have given with the descending order. Okay, that up code. With the descending order, you go the upper bound tools, see? Upper bound tools, that, see? That entry, see, you go to this one, you go to B1, you're gonna say give me the 2500. See? So, this is the highest bound 15. What will the following code do? What will the following code do? See, sampling distribution resample. See? It's not gonna do that one, it creates only one sample. See? It's create a sample from the observation we already given in which suit. See, you're not gonna you're not gonna do anything. You create another sample. That's it. New sample. See, you create a new sample. You're not gonna look for the B1. In order to look for the B1, you have to fit in into the regression model and then extract B1 one at a time. See? And next time you go, you don't have the same sample that you utilized the first time. You resample it, you reshuffle it, and then you get that new one. For that one, you're going to fit in into the regression model and then calculate the extract the B1 again, which is the slope. You keep doing this one, and then you build up that all the B1. It's called, and then with the aid of the B1s, you're going to draw a sampling distribution of B1. See? See? It's a a sampling distribution of not B, B1. See? B1. B1. See? So like that. Let's go to B1. This one, you don't have to worry about that one. You're not going to plug in into that one and get the value. We don't have to worry about that one. In detail, we can do it. This is not a big deal, but that's the formula. Okay. So let's go. See? Uh, this one that create a new sample from this one, B. And number 16, the best fitting model for the no wetsuit to predict the wetsuit can be specified like this. See? This is how we're going to write. It's a confidence interval for beta 1 is 0 0.9547 millisecond plus or minus this one millisecond. Which of the following is not correct interpretation? We are 95 confident that the true, see, which not a correct now, slope of the DGP will be in this range. The slope of the DGP means, DGP means the population, beta 1, okay? We are 95% confident, okay? 
uh, there are there is a 95 percent chance if you repeated this experiment with a different set of swimmers the slope of the regression line will fall within this confidence interval 95 percent wetsuit velocities have their relationship with the no, no wetsuit velocity the true parameter will likely fall inside this interval see this everything explain the confidence interval see this one plus or minus this one see and remember beta one plus or minus this much this is nothing but the standard error see standard error see standard error see the margin of error see this one sorry margin of error maximum i'm sorry margin of error so what they were talking about they were talking about if you write that uh, on the 16 So y equals b naught plus b one x plus error. So the same thing you can y means what? With suit. And b naught plus b one plus error. See? Then they're gonna say confidence interval for beta one. See, beta one, not d one. Okay, I'm writing the confidence interval for it's plus a given by point estimate of see point estimate of beta one plus or minus margin error of beta one hat point estimate is nothing but beta one hat plus or minus margin of it of beta one hat not right this is this is the of beta one plus or minus of data one hat. This is nothing but B one hat. B one hat ops plus or minus margin of error of B one. B one so B one. They have given that so see? see interval confidence interval beta one is point nine five forty seven plus so minus point one one eight see? that could give the the whole bunch of estimates for the data data. Beta, see? So this will tell us what? They will tell us we are 95 confident that the true slope of the DGP will be in this range. That's right. There's a 95% chance that if you repeat this experiment with a different set of swimmers, different set of swimmers, the slope of the regression line, the slope of the regression line will fall within this confidence interval. 95% wetsuit velocity have their relation with the no wetsuit? No, that's the one that we cannot infer from this one. And the true B will likely fall inside this interval. Yes. A, B, D or others that uh, that kind of like correct interpretation, but this is uh, not the correct one. So it should be C. Okay. The best fitting model for use in no wetsuit to predict wetsuit can be specified like this wetsuit, B not B, blah, blah, E, yeah. If the confidence interval is point blah blah plus this one, how big is the standard error? See, standard error of the sampling distribution of B1. 
standard error. Okay, I'm going to add to this one one more thing. Okay, I'm going to come over here, margin of error. Okay, okay. I'm going to write this one to answer number 17, B1 ops plus or minus margin of error of B1. So B1 ops, this one we can split into two parts, this one and standard error of B1, see? Standard error of this one. Standard error is nothing but the sampling distribution of that this B1, see? PC times standard error of B1, see? Times standard error. error of B1. You can remember that B1 ops has been given, okay? We know that point nine five. 47 plus or minus. Can you remember according to that empirical rule? You can put the 2 for CC. And SC of B1 is this much. See, we don't know that. But the margin of error has been given. See? 0 0.118. 118. Standard error of B1 is nothing but 0.118 divided by 2. Okay. Roughly, okay. 0.118 divided by 2. Okay. We found the best sampling distribution with velocity. Theater sampling distribution bootstrapping. The R code has been given. What will be the center of the sampling distribution of B1? What would be the center? You saw the center, see? You don't have to worry about this one. You saw this one. You saw this one. I, I drew this one. But the center of the standard division is nothing but the B1 ops. B1 ops. Center is B1 ops. B1 absurd value. B1 ops. Okay. So that's that one. And the number 19. The best fitting model has been given. Using the central limit theorem, we found that the confidence interval being this one. This what does mean that the model has an explanatory variable is a better model than the empty model? Why does this mean? Mean that the thing is between this and that. See? According to central limit theorem, which is you are using the confint, see, embedded in the confint, we found that the confidence interval for beta 1 will be this one to this one. Why does this mean that the model with no suit as explanatory variable is better model than the empty model? See? If you estimate between this one, see, then the confidence interval has been given. See? Confidence interval has been given. See? Okay, the confidence interval has been It is, see? You are that slope, see? Increment. Increment for unit increment in the, that, uh, the wetsuit, see? Unit increment of this one, this one has the speed, okay? The unit increment in no wetsuit, see? Better model than empty model. That means you don't have anything over. You just get the y bar only. Okay. Y bar only. Okay. Y bar of this one. Y bar means y bar of this guy. See? Y bar of this one. See? So y bar means this one bar. This is the average. Okay. So that one, but the beta one, see, if you go to the machine, this means that the model with the no set of extended variable is a better model, see, with the aid of this one. This beta one, see, if you don't have this one, you don't have a beta one. 
You go to the empty module, you don't have this guy. Then you don't have a school. You have a this guy only. Those being added. And they added that value, this value, going to be between this one to that one. They both are positive, see? Positive value, because the speed up. Because of that one, we can say it's a better model, okay? You just uh, read more and then get a more idea about to that how to explain that one, okay? I want to leave that one for you guys to do that one, okay? So what is the note? Is that from the scatter plot, see? The model, this one, Sabas. okay. I will bootstrap in. Recall that the variable speed up is the difference between the swimming with the wetsuit versus no wetsuit. Why, why might you want to find the point below which 2.5% bootstrap sample mean for speed up fall and the point about 2.5 simulator sample mean for speed up fall? Because why you wanna, sorry, number 20. Number 20. Notice that the scatter plot swimsuit velocity indicate wetsuit velocity. This is model for this data is 0 0.1995 and this is total 0.2443. How can no wetsuit explain the variation wetsuit so well, even though these two sum of scales are so small? Doesn't matter. These are so small, but if you get the ratio between those two, see, SS model. SS model means SSR. SSR. I'm on number 20. SSR. SSR is how much? 0. 0.1995. Okay. 0. 0.1995. I think this part is not. This part is that. Uh, notice that from the scatter plot, no wetsuit. Uh, predict wetsuit velocity well. The sum of SS, okay? This one SS model. SS model. You so, cannot see that one. SS would say. Can I write this? Yes. Yeah. No, I'm going to expand this one a little bit. Yeah, SS. Okay, SS model for this data. Get up this one, lift up to. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Okay, now you can see. This. And this one, I can get rid of that one. No. Can I? Yes. So I'm gonna go back to what I had. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, now you can see, get rid of, sorry, get rid of. Oh, Okay, the SS model for this data is this one, SS store is how now. Okay. Here it is. Oh. And the variation now. So even though these two sum of are so small. Don't need this one. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the
So it doesn't matter because of that. Uh, uh, so very well, the variation, how can now explain? They say very well, very well that uh, that one predicts uh, wetsuit velocity is very well predicted by the no wetsuit velocity. The SS model for this one is 0 0.19. Point. One nine nine five divided by point twenty forty three. Twenty forty three. This point ninety seven. Ninety seven percent. That means it's a very better fit, extremely better fit. That's why it doesn't matter. They were they, were, they were explain variation variation stuff. See? Doesn't matter. This variation is a small. That that variation is a small. Even the small is compared to the smaller total. See, compared to 20, 43, 19 percent. Almost everything being explained by that model. See, that's why they have see, will fit in straight into that. See, all the data gonna fall onto that straight line. Then how tightly they were how closely they were uh, that uh, spread out around that uh, regression line is called the correlation or that uh, the prediction okay? or that the proportional reduction in error okay? so recall that uh, that variable speed up is the difference between swimming with the wetsuit versus no wetsuit why might you want to find the point below which 2.5 percent bootstrap sample mean for speed up fall and the point above which 2.5 was the similar sample mean for speed up fall right why might you want to find the point below which 2.5 percent of bootstrap sample mean? Okay. i need a point this is a lower point this is lower point Below which 2.5% of the booster sample means. Okay. I'm going to find the point below which 2.5% of the booster sample means going to fall. Okay. Okay. That's time. So, okay. yes. that's, that's what we call the confidence interval. See? Okay. Then see if you have a that see. Let's say that uh, for anything speed up, okay, anything see speed up. See, say that uh, this is y. This is y. See, this is the y. Okay, y is nothing but speed up. Okay, speed up is the difference between the velocity. Wetsuit versus no wetsuit. See, it's a difference between the see velocity of uh, wetsuit minus velocity of no wetsuit velocity wetsuit. Minus velocity of no wet suit. So, okay, anyhow, speed up. Okay, I think it's getting messed up. This pin has some issues. Okay. So from this one, we have that value. Ninety-five percent. I'm going to keep here. Ninety-five percent. Okay. See, ninety-five percent. But I really need to find, yeah, I'm find, trying to find out, see, we might want to find the point below which, 
point okay? is the point below which okay, two point five. Okay? I say where this is sample mean bootstrap sample mean okay sample mean y bar. I'm gonna make up this one y bar hat okay y bar y bar okay sample mean speed up mean okay the point below okay that's we are looking for the point below which 2.5 percent of bootstrap bootstrap or simulated or collected sample means Sample mean for speed up for is two point five percent point two two five. So out of that bootstrap sample means, okay, out of this two, that all oh, total sample means 2.5% of the sample means going to fall that below this particular point, which is called the lower bound, see, lower bound of mean. Okay. The same way if you, it's just, that's the lower bound, it's the same way you can think about upper bound, see. See point. See point above which two point five percent. See two point five percent of bootstrap sample means. Speed up or bootstrap Okay. Up. Oh. That's the upper bar. That what are the person? What are the benefits of having something like that? See, those points would be help you to determine whether the sample would be considered likely to have come from a population with a mean between those two points. Yes, we can think about that. That if you're gonna have those two points, we can say that my I can think about that my sample would considered likely to have come from a population. I don't know how it looks like, but at least I can talk about the mean between these two points. With the, that population, the population would have a, some kind of a mean within these two points. See, eh? within these two points. See. Eh? Then if you want to find the confidence interval for that one, confidence interval for say mu, confidence interval for mu is nothing but lower bound of mu, come on, upper bound of mu. So then we can have an idea, I don't know the shape, how the population mean, see, population, the population, <coughs> 
the population says the sample, whatever the sample you have in hand, it uh, seems like it's coming from a certain population. See, why now speed up? See? Speed up. See? Come from a certain population. With the center, see, center would be between what and what? There will be mu and upon mu. We don't know exactly what the value would be, but we can roughly say that my population from which that sample has been extracted, see, population, see, Population, see? see? Center would be in, not exactly at the mu. We can say it may be lower bound or upper between lower bound or upper bound. It has been determined by the just uh, the, the sample, whatever we have in our hands, see, population from which the observed sample has been expected. And it's not right. It's not right. Hmm. So that it would be enabled to cal calculate the margin of error? Yes. See? It would enable to calculate the margin of error. It would allow you to establish the confidence intervals. All of these. Okay? The mean maximum swim velocity when we are in a wetsuit is 1.51 meters per second. The margin of error has been given. What's the range of possible value within which you are confident that actual population mean would form? You can get into the formula. No? Can you remember the formula? You can use the formula. See? Okay. Um, okay. You know, confidence interval. Confidence interval for the what? Mean maximum swing velocity. See? Mean. Maximum velocity, which is mean for what? Mean of y, okay? Well, you see, this is true mean maximum velocity when we are in, see, with. That's the true mean. We have given the absurd mean, see? Y bar ups plus so minus, see? Margin of error, the formula. When there is a bit suit.
So y bars has been given. How much? 1.43. No, I'm sorry. 1.51. 1.51. Plus or minus. Margin of error. 0 0.08. And we can easily write that upper bound and lower bound. See, confidence interval for me, nothing but I'm going to write the lower bound. That uh, 1.51 minus 0 0.08, comma, 1.51 plus 0 0.08 to get the upper bound. See, that's the lower bound. See, it's the lower bound of mu. Is the upper bound of me. So when you subtract, see, then what is it? 1.43 come out. 1.59. 9 meters per second. That's the confidence in meters per second. Per second. Hmm. Answer should be B. What's the value in using this? What's the value in using T distribution? Why we are using T distribution? It breaks real as the model of the sample distribution. If the sample size is small and the standard deviations are unknown. We talk about that one. We, we talk about that one. Okay. We talk about that one in large scale. Why we are using T distribution during the time that we were talking about T distribution at this moment. See? The reason we go to T. Excuse me. Anyway. Why? Sigma is unknown. Small sample. And less than 30. Okay. That's why we go to T. Okay. So. So the answer should be what? It worked well as a model of the as a model of the sample distribution if the sample size is small and the standard deviation population is unknown. B. 24. If the distribution of no weights would was more variable, more variable, that is has a greater standard deviation in a distribution of weight suit. What would be true about the confidence interval? <laughs> If the distribution of no wetsuit was more variable, that is as a greater standard deviation for the no wetsuit than the that uh, than the distribution of the wetsuit, what would be the true about the confidence interval of no wetsuit compared to the wetsuit? Okay. Okay. No wetsuit. If the distribution separately, you're gonna see that how. How the, the distributions would be. The distribution of no weights was more variable as a greater standard deviation than the distribution of weights. Would. What would be true about the confidence interval of no weights would compared to two weights? Would. So they are simply looking for, see, look at they are looking for. Something like this. So they have, they say that uh, the spread, okay, look at this curve. I'm going to get uh, my convenience. See? see, I would say y, see, y is the velocity with what? Without wetsuit, okay. No wetsuit. That means no wetsuit. This one no wet 
Okay. And look at the spread. I'm talking about this spread. Sigma of this y. Let's say y. See, now we have y1. y1. I'm going to get that one, another one. Another one, so see. You're going to compare with that one, see. Smaller spread, see. Sigma y2. y2 is velocity with absolute. It's called the absolute. Wait. It's so So this one, wet suit. Its name is wet suit, that variable. See? See, if they were say, was more variable than the greater standard deviation than the distribution of wet suit, what would true about the confidence interval compared to wet suit? No wet suit compared to no wet suit has a more district this one, then your confidence interval will get in wider. And if you go ahead and find that uh, speed up, see, speed up means see, that the difference speed up means a velocity with, see, no weight, see, without velocity, sorry, I'm sorry, without, without weight, so too, minus, Velocity width, it's such. And if you get that uh, the difference, and then find that they are, they have been asked about that, that uh, difference, okay, confidence interval compared to the wetsuit, that th difference would be because. No wetsuit interval would be wider compared to the wetsuit. No wetsuit would be higher. The standard deviation. So see that by looking at this. Spread wider means like a standard deviation wider. See? Spread. See? They say more where they have a greater standard deviation. Again, then what would be true about the confidence interval about the no wetsuit compared to the wetsuit? Whose confidence interval would be wider? Whose confidence interval would be wider? See, if you write the confidence interval, standard deviation will be taken into account, no? Standard deviation is complete margin of error. Look at the margin of error here. Pc times sigma y1. Here, margin of error. Cc times sigma y2. Who has the highest margin of error one? See, I'm gonna call this one margin of error one. This one margin of error two. See? Sigma y two. So definitely whoever has the that higher with that variation, see? You see, margin of error is greater, the greater the see? The greater the spread, the greater the, the wider the, wider the confidence interval. So, the wider. Divide the confidence interval. So, oh, 
See what will be the following code do? See X Q T. I know remember the quantile. 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 Return the tree critical value for sample size. Thousand. Thousand because the degrees of freedom n minus one. Okay. So that will get the T C. T C. Okay. T C. Okay. If you want to know, if you decide. If you decide you want to increase your level of confidence in your estimate of wetsuit from 99, 95%, what will happen to your confidence interval? Okay. Increase your level of increase. When you increase the level, it will become wider. Okay. It will become wider. See? You know that. You earlier had a thing. It's very clear. The same scenario. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, okay. so let's say that uh, you have this one. Okay. So this is your y velocity. Okay. With red suit. Okay. So earlier you say you have a 95, see? Okay? 95, you can see. Lower bound of mu, upper bound of mu. Okay? Now I'm going to change it, this one, 95%. 95% if I'm going to change is this one. Okay? Oh, no. Ninety-five percent. This is lower bound. Now I'm going to change this. Wait. Now what? This one ninety-nine percent. In the Lower bound of me, upper bound of me. Spider. It will become wider when you increase of it percentage. The confidence coefficient, if you increase this intensity, level of confidence, it will become wider. If you want to see, if you want to know if a regression model is better than a simple model in terms of making prediction, what parameter should you make the sampling distribution now? If you want to know if the regression model is better than a simple model see, in terms of the making prediction, see, what would be the sampling distribution now? The slope. Otherwise, it's going to be empty model. See, can you remember? You can remember if it's been in the empty model like this. See, look at this is empty model. This empty model. Empty model. No slope. No slope. See this one. It's a regression model. See. Who's responsible for this one? The inclination. Inclination is the one that you're taking into account. Inclination means slow. Inclination means slow. See, you want to take into account the inclination. Inclination. Inclination means slow. 
So, so please be taken into account. I really empty model with respect to this one. If you want to come to a regression model, you're going to take into account the slope. Okay. So presumably. Okay. Right, this this. I thought there's another one. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up. This one, get rid of this one. You get rid of that. This one, I think. You want to see some stuff? Yeah. This will be in this one. Yeah, I'll delete this one. I don't know. Let's see. Something inside. Something okay. Similarly, person swimming velocity varying just as their swimsuit, no wetsuit will swimsuit, no wetsuit will predict their maximum velocity while wearing wetsuit, which is the best, which is the best. So that's the same thing. Okay, here. This is we get the relationship with suit versus no with suit. See, they have relationship, they can say with suit and no with suit. See, this they are in with suit will predict their maximum velocity while they are in the with suit. See, with suit to no with suit with the scatter part, part B. We get scatter plot. 
Above, we have included a normal table for the wet food, non wet food, plus other stuff. Which distance is the basis for the standard? Which distance is the basis for the standard? Sorry, sum of squared error. Sorry, sum of squared error. The distance between the data point and the empty models prediction? No. The distance between the data point and the no wet suit models prediction? The data point to the regression line? B. Analysis agency, which of the following is the correct interpretation of P? P is nothing but 90% of the sum of square from the empty model can be explained by adding no weight suit to the complex model. B. Okay. No, no. No, that's okay. Skip going. Most probably that I'm going to do this one today and then I'm going to make like another video and then upload it for the that uh, assignment tomorrow or Sunday. Okay. Let's see. Let's finish this part. See, some of the following questions are based on the speed dating data frame, which has 273 observation and 22 variables. Data come from a study of speed dating in which each person participated in four minute data with a member of the opposite sex. At the end of the day, they, are, they each rate of other persons on various attributes. Okay. See, all this age and male's age, attractive female rating on male's attractive. No? We, we have seen this data set. If you use the LM to fit the empty model or like him and then use config to find the confidence interval, what does the confidence interval tell you? If you first go to the empty model, empty model will give you news, okay? New. See, it gives you a range of possible Range of possible D data ones? No. It gives you range of possible data, not the new, both the same. That could have generated your sample. It will give you a range of possible data, data not or new, the same thing. Data not or new, that could have generated something. Both B and C correct. See, using the R code above, we fit this model. What does the X1 refer to? X1 is nothing but X1 is fun name. Each male's each male's value on fun in each male's value on fun in each male's okay. I stand for that. Which distribution would you use to create a confidence interval? It's very easy sampling distribution for sure. Not the sample distribution, not the population, sampling distribution. If you increase your sample size in a study, how does it affect the 95 confidence interval around the parameter estimate? Sample size. You're going to increase the sample size. See, larger the sample size, smaller the confidence interval. Now, why? When you increase sample size, standard deviation go down. It would make the confidence interval what? Narrow. Narrow. See? Narrow. See? That means it's confidence interval. See, confidence interval for mu is nothing but y bar ops plus or minus pc s ops over square root. Can I remember? When n goes up, what are you going to go up? S ops over square root 10 go down. When they go down, confidence interval for mu going down, narrow. Going down, okay. No. Okay. What is the difference between standard deviation and standard error? Standard deviation, 
standard error applies to sampling distribution, standard deviation applies to sample or population distribution. We call the standard error to sam error applied to sampling distribution. Standard error means standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Standard deviation means standard deviation applies to sam sample or population distribution. Sample. Okay. That's the spread of the sample or population distribution. This is the spread of the sampling distribution. If you fit regression model, then construct 95 confidence interval for the estimate of data one. If the confidence interval includes zero, what does this mean? See? What that means? See? If you fit a regression model, then construct 95 confidence interval for the estimate of data one. If the confidence interval includes zero, what does this mean? Okay? Let's have a look at it, this one. Let's be in a broader range. Okay? Look at this one. I'm gonna say I'm trying to see. Look at what I'm trying to see. Okay. B see, I'm gonna go to testing of hypothesis at the same time. Testing of hypothesis. What this mean? This is gonna be gonna talk about in next week, but this is related. I'm testing H naught. Null hypothesis. Null. Would be what? Your data one is zero. Should be tested against its counterpart. Alternative. Alternative hypothesis. Hypothesis, okay. You do not think of the same. Look at what I'm trying to say. I'm going to say equivalently. I would say H naught is empty model because we don't have a beta one empty model. We're going to take empty model and can be checked against regression model. H A would be regression model. Yeah, I'm gonna See. Now what? Now we're going to check something. We're going to check which one we're going to take into account, whether we're going to accept H0 or reject H0, or whether we're going to accept H0 or H0, 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 reject H0. So to do that one, we have to have a decision rule, decision rule.
What are the decision rules? I can talk about three decision rules. Okay. One means we're going to see T value. We're going to talk about that on later, but for time being, see T value is extremely small if, I'm sorry, if, if P value is extremely small or P value is less than The level of significance. We're going to talk about all this later, but no, this is not alpha. Not right. You cannot even come from me. Wait, is it? I'm going to raise it. Fever is extremely small. So, Fever is Less than significance. We reject that note. Reject that note. Second one. If the absurd value. Greater than the critical values greater. Then we take the value we reject this note. 
the third one if t null hypothesized null hypothesized value is within the confidence interval we accept it's not therefore in our case beta 1 seems beta 1 equals 0 they say it, it is within no? they say it is within okay. Okay. confidence interval includes 0 then beta 1 is within confidence interval for beta 1 we accept it's not that means we accept null model empty model This arrow means implies, okay? I put the arrow for the implies. We accept. Accept that. Null. So empty. So therefore, see, if there is a confidence interval, first one beta one is the confidence interval zero, which has been hypothesized, null hypothesized. We suggest that we should retain the empty model B. Okay, so conclusion. The sample distribution are made up of Sample distribution made up of individual scores. Sampling distribution are made up of sample statistics. Sample statistics means Y bar, V0, V1. Those are sample statistics. A. So, so the best fitting model using attract MM to predict like M can be specified like this. So like M say like that. Which of the following is incorrect to interpretation of the confidence interval beta 1 in this model? We are confident see, that the true slope of the DGB will be in the same range. There is a 5% chance that the interval does not contain the true slope of the DGB. A 95% chance they're going to contain, 5% chance they do not. That's right. 95% of all like ratings have the relationship with this one. We don't know. Relationship, we cannot talk about. The true parameter will likely fall inside it. This is the only one cannot be predicted through that division model. C. The best fitting model using this one to that one. If the 95 confidence interval is this plus or minus this much, how big is the standard error? Standard error is that margin of error, see, which is 0 0.21 divided by 2. We had that kind of a question earlier too. If you decide want to increase your level of confidence, can you remember the 95 to 90 it will become wider? Okay. You know that one. Okay. The plot by show most means like in female as a function of whether or not they want to date them again, decision, yes or no. What does the plot say? All female with whom male wanted to go out on another date were like or more than female with whom. Okay. 
They have a female that makes light. See, that make light a lot, but with whom they did not want to go out on another date. They have a females that males like a lot. See, they like a lot. But most of them say, see, most of them say, no, 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 no. They, they like a different liking, but they all like, but most of them say they don't want to go for another date with them. There were females that male, that males like a lot, see? but with whom they didn't want to go out on another date. Like him, sorry, the like him means, uh, let me see, like him. How much the male likes the female? Oh, sorry. How much male likes the female? Okay. Even the male likes the female, they don't want to go for another day. See? No. How many people? Females that males like a lot, but with whom they didn't want to go out on another date. See? See, this is ANOVA table. We use the AGM to predict rate in the fund name. The value for this model, the table of this above is 0 0.02. What does this F ratio tell? The F ratio tell what? You should reject them to 2%. They are saying 80% chance of fraud. No, none of the above. They don't explain anything. We're using the code below, we created a model to predict like him using fund name as the explanatory variable. We then construct and identify fund name. We repeated this study and found a larger standard error. What would be different about the confidence interval for B? Like with an identify confidence interval B, V1 would be what? We repeated the study and found a larger standard error. See, when you find a larger the standard error, why the confidence interval would be? See. Using speed date in data frame. Okay. Find the model like I'm using the special as the standard variable. What's the 95% confidence interval for data one? How do you find the same using the speed date in data frame? Speed date in data frame fit a model. First, like him using the same shared interest in as the explanatory variable. Like him, see. First, you fit in into this one, okay? See, like this. Then go to confident. I'm going to do over here on my other. So this time I need the uh, speed date in data frame, data okay. Uh, like him, it's okay. It's being taken care by shared, shared interest. Uh, then I'm gonna say that uh, shared interest model. That one I would call that one share interest model. And this one, okay. Yeah, I got 0 0.35, 0 0.35 to 0 0.53. It's beta one, confidence. Yeah. Then what? Use the data cam window about to construct a faceted histogram of how much fun males perceive females to be by male race. The speed date in data frame. Which of the race group most likely the panel below? Which of the race groups looks most like the panel below? Asian, black, Caucasian. Let's go ahead and get the uh, faceted uh, histogram. See, when you do the faceted histogram, you can see the location. Okay. And next one, too. Some of scared error. Okay. You can run this one and find that value. 
if we add the parameter speed data in study, which could be not affected. If we add more participants to the speed dating study, definitely, but which would not, would not be affected. The beta naught, which is what? The empty model. We add more participants to the speed dating study. This one, B naught, was a parameter estimate. N will increase, this will change, this will be, but parameter never been evaluated. In that way, it not be affected. Imagine we draw two random samples from the population and measure the each case of sample on the sample, same outcome variable. One sample had an N equals 30, the other has an N equals C. Which of the following statement true? One is larger, the other one is smaller. The sum of scale, the larger sample would almost certainly be greater than the but sum of scales of the larger sample be greater than the sum of scales of the smaller sample because the sum of scale we're going to calculate that on sum of squared for so many large, uh, so many data points in the larger sample than in the smaller sample. Okay. If you bootstrap a sampling distribution based on a sample of data, what will be the mean of the bootstrap distribution? The mean is nothing but the mean is mean, is, mean of your sample would be the that y bar ops. Y bar ops would be the that. Uh, mean of that particular sampling distribution. Okay. If you use shuffle to create a randomized sampling distribution of the group difference based on sample, what will be the mean of the real sampling? Okay. What will be the same? If you use the mean of your sample, or sometimes it may be zero or because of the reshuffle. If you're going to shuffle it, I'm going to talk about that one too in the large scale. That one. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to pretty much stop over here. I'm going to make another video to that, go through that uh, the assignment and then upload it tomorrow, Sunday morning. Okay. You guys have a great day. Then uh, stay safe and be well. And uh, see you guys on Monday. Take care. Bye bye.